Hi folks, thanks for joining me for this week's vlog. As you can see, all the foliage is off the trees now. The ranunculus is all but gone from the river and the trout season's a distant memory. Many anglers have uh, cleaned up and packed up their kit for the winter months. But in recent years, grayling fishing has become really popular as a pastime for them cold winter months. So, without further ado, let's get into it. The grayling were once thought a pest, but now they're a highly prized game fish for the all year round angler. But there's a couple of things you should really know before you venture out to fish for grayling. To really get the best out of grayling fishing in the winter, you've got to be dressed properly and the right equipment is essential. Wearing the right equipment is going to improve your day's sport wholeheartedly. There's nothing worse than being uncomfortable while you're out fishing. So from top to tail if you like, I've got a woolly hat on top of my cap so I can cover my ears and I've also got some polarised sunglasses. These are really important for a couple of reasons. Obviously eye protection is the number one reason but also to see into the water. I've already had a look at the Manningford stretch of the river today and it is crystal clear. I can't actually wait to get fishing. Uh, so going down I've got an outer shell. Underneath the outer shell is a fleece and underneath the fleece is a long sleeve t-shirt. Now I'm also wearing an all-in-one thermal suit if you like which is sleeveless but that helps to keep my legs warm over the top of the thermal i've got a pair of trousers that are lined and i've obviously got my waders now you'll notice i've got knee pads on and in the good old days when i used to do a lot of competition fishing this was for sneaking up stealthily to the bank side and casting at wary fish now I'm usually crawling up the side of the bank trying to clamber out and these just protect my waders from being ripped. Uh, I'm wearing three pair of socks under my wading boots and I'm pretty toasty. So, all set, let's get to the job at hand which is the fishing. Checking out the river levels is also really advisable. Um, I'm going to stick a link in the description to where you can see river levels in the UK. Now. Other countries have probably got very similar systems, so, you know, check your local area and make sure you know what the river levels are going to be doing. There's nothing worse than travelling a distance to find that the river's very high and filthy, so make sure you do that before you leave. So, the grayling tend to live on the bottom of the river in the winter and they shoal up, so when you find one there's generally a few uh, hanging around. The best way of delivering your flies is, I find, is to use two nymphs. And what I've got set up here is a 10 foot Hanak rod. Uh, this is the Czech nymph. And I've also got a French leader with a little bit of indicator that I've put some coloured wax on so that I can see it more easily. From there, I've got about three feet to my first nymph and then another three feet to my next nymph. And what I want to do is lob it in above me and then immediately get my indicator into sight so that I can see it. And I'm looking for any little, just tripped there but that was the bottom. Any little movement in the indicator. Again, got the bottom there. With these short days, you've really got to make the most of your fishing. So what I tend to do is have a big breakfast in the morning and then just fish all the daylight hours. It's getting dark about half, three, four o'clock, so it's not a big ask. And uh, it pays to chop and change your technique. I'm having a grand day here at Manningford River. It's absolutely superb fishing. Nearly four miles of water, it's a lot of distance to cover, but it's certainly worth the walk.
Okay, if you have a little look at my rod here, my line's actually over the blank, and that's not an accident. Uh, I've done that on purpose, and the reason is, if, if I didn't have my line over the blank, I would have all this sag, and what that means is my line's not in direct contact with my nymphs. So what I do is always loop it over, and then I'm in immediate contact with the nymphs. And that's the name of the game. When nymphing, you've got to be in contact. A tree! No way! <laughs> oh, Will I get that back, Jenk? In the winter then, the grayling really like to show up and if you find them, then sport can get quite hectic. They will occasionally rise to a dry fly, but in the depths of winter, these occasions are very rare. Uh, sometimes you don't even see the sun, such as today. I've not seen the sun, I wouldn't know what it looks like if it did appear. It's been that long. But, the best way to approach it is to use a nymphing technique. Now, I say nymphing technique because people get a bit precious about Czech nymphing, Spanish nymphing, French nymphing, Euro nymphing. There's all kinds of nymphing. Just do whatever you, call it whatever you want. I just call it nymphing. But basically, the best way to deliver your flies to the grayling, who are making their living out of foraging the bottom, is in my opinion, double nymphing. Well, that's the setup I like to use. I would love to hear how you experts out there set up your kit for catching fish. So please leave a comment below and let me know how you approach grayling fishing in the winter. Sometimes you've just got to pause and think how lucky we are in this country to have such special fish that we can come out in the depths of winter and still have great sport. Let's have a look at this one. Brilliant. Well, that's me nearly all done. I hope you folks have got something out of that and that it's encouraged you to give grayling fishing a go in the winter. Hey, I've been very lucky. The weather's been so mild. I've been toasty all day because I'm wearing the right kit and uh, I've caught a few grayling. It's been great fun. I've got to say a big thank you to Malcolm Hunt, who was my cameraman for much of the day. And uh, I really appreciate him taking time because I know how busy a fishery manager is. And uh, if you want, to come and give grayling fishing a go, you could do worse than come down to Manning for trout fisheries. Uh, the two guys in the lodge, Fenn and Malcolm, are both experienced anglers and they would give you a good steer on how to get a hold of some of these pristine fish.
Well, that's me folks, I've caught a few fish, got a big smile on my face now, and uh, what I'm going to do next is stick a couple of the nymphs up that has done me particularly well today. If you would like to click on them when you're going grailing fishing next, give them a go and let me know how you get on. Please don't forget to subscribe to the channel and click that bell for all the notifications and new videos. See you all next time.